Krishna Xerox machine because when Kodak, this gentleman couldn't sell it to Kodak, Kodak refused. They said, this is of no value. Xerox was the one which picked it up very reluctantly. And you know, again, rest was history. Psychological filters. Chiku and Six Sigma, we spoke. We spoke about the Swiss watch industry, Tarjumaran run. Now, this is, this is something very, very strange. Like, we talk about 26, 26 mile marathon. Everybody who runs, there is a Facebook photo, there is a Facebook post. Even if you stand there, even if you run one kilometer, there is a Facebook post and there are likes, and then you, then you start counting the likes. And, you know, you're sporty. I'm sporty. So, uh, my work life balance. Better mama ran. So, now, these people. They run 70 mile as a part of the religious tradition. 26 mile is child's play because they've been running from their childhood. Running is fun. In this part of North Mexico, running is fun. So the paradigms that they carry is 70 miles is nothing. And for 26 miles, I don't know how much practice do we do. Now, this is something very important. This room and all other rooms in business, we have people who had been practicing some of the other paradigm for a long time. So it will take courage to embrace new paradigms, new cultures, new concepts. And we're going to be very self-aware of our own filters. We're going to be self-aware of our unconscious bias. We're going to be self-aware about what's preventing us from accepting things which will take us to the next stage. And these are some of the answers you will find in some of the presentation challenges raised in the presentations in the morning. Lack of self-awareness, unconscious bias, way we are brought up, and established paradigms through which we have tasted success in the past in our careers. So we got to be more courageous and more change resist and more, more aware about our change resistance. Because the better you are at your current paradigm, the bigger is the resistance to shift to the new paradigm. This, these are all controversies. The better you are in your current paradigm, the more difficult it is for you to change. The more successful an executive is in his career or her career, the more difficult it is for that executive to change. So as I said, we manage within a paradigm, but true leaders, they lead between paradigms. Facilitate and encourage cross talks. I love that collaboration panel when you all stood up and, and Mr. Gupta said, from now onwards, from today onwards, there will be no problem in any collaboration, any problem, one can go to Sid, right? So, so that, was, that was so good. <laughs> so we need to facilitate and encourage cross talks. And the major, major quality that we need to look forward is leading in ambiguity and leading in paradox. The world will never be perfect, and the world is never black and white. So how the leaders of this organization, or for any organization today, the foremost things are basically leading in ambiguity and leading in paradox. You have a choice. You can bask in your current success, have a great grave, Decorated one, build one for yourself right from now because you'll have money now, because you are successful or choose to change your paradigm to feel and respond because whatever has worked for you till now will not work for tomorrow. It has never worked. It has not worked for anybody. In fact, I was going around the Ford factory and uh, Alan Mule that time, you know, like he was a CEO and I had the fortune uh, of meeting him because my professor was Marshall Goldsmith and Marshall Goldsmith was the coach to him and he, in fact, Alan